You put the toilet paper on the toilet paper roll. Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Child, Massachusetts. So tune the front panel to the Talbot Lago a little bit. And uh, we took and punched all the holes where the gauges go. And we transferred those onto the panel. And all the, the, the uh, different gauges are numbered. This is number four. And we put that on there right there, and you can see that fits really nice. That's the objective. When you first put the gauges in, they're not generally perfect. So you have to work that one a little bit, work this one a little bit, work that, and you keep going around the horn until you get them all. So I got them all. They're fitting within a sixteenth or so. The surface quality is pretty nice. I actually could stand a little bit more right here. It's not bad, though. And we've laid out the tip line. And I made that error where I cut this, uh, I didn't leave enough material here. So I'm going to be a little short right, right in, in a spot from about here to here. If I have to, I'll weld a little piece on there, not a big deal. I got this set up for a wired edge later on. It's still a little long. Still leave this a little long. And this is a little long too. It'll be trimmed. So the first thing we got to do now is... This is what I call the god line. That's from the flexible shape pattern. And I lay them out with the blue tape to get a really good corrected line uh, because sometimes these get a little scraggly on the edges. It's best to keep them really nice and clean on the edges, but they do get beat up a little bit or not properly cut when you first make them. So then I transferred the line inside with a divider and I'll do a light tip on this and then see where it comes through. It should be coming through right here. And then this will have to be shrunk down. And this eventually will tip 90 degrees after we get it trimmed and then a wired edge. But I probably won't do that until I have the other panel joined to it. And we do them, do them a couple of at a, at a time. So let's try tipping this here and see what we got. All right, so we're going to do a little uh, preliminary tip here. Just really lightly touch it. And we're going to make sure that our line, I had to make an adjustment on the line right here because it was wandering out of the way here. So we want it to come on this side of that tape. So we're going to go in this way here and just we're going to kiss these wheels together. You don't bite them in hard, just, just kissing. So I'm just going to go real slow. And we'll make adjustments if it doesn't look right. I'm just lightly scoring it here. And this is the fulcrum and the lever. This is the lever. This is the fulcrum. The wheel's the fulcrum. So then we want to check. And not deep enough over here. I can't see it. But here it looks pretty good. So let me go one more pass through here. This is our peak line, so it's super important. Looks like I hit it and nailed it really good. Looks like it's right on there. Now, this is where it makes that big transition right there. You can see how much extra material is here. So now I'm going to have to shrink that down. This is all going to have to be shrunk a little bit, but especially where it makes the big strong curve. There's your big strong curve. There's all kinds of extra material right there. So I'm going to put that in the shrinker and we'll shrink that up. 
So we need to remove a lot of that metal because it's got to go down this way. So you do that. If you go in like this, you'll bug it all up, you know, if you go in too deep. All right, so we're going to do uh, the shrinking on this edge. Now, we don't want to come in deep. We want to come in shallow and work our way in a little bit. So most of the shrinking has to happen on the edge. So we've got to do multiple shrinks on the edge to bring that down and around. Now this is a stipple shrinker. It's got Urco dies in it. It's my design. Shrinker stretcher. You get a nice bounce. It's counterweighted. We have this nice lever system that you can swing away if you want to but it makes it really easy to use on a panel like this even now if you use the Lancaster type or the Harbor Freight copy those have straight cuts in them uh, like a file and they tend to really mock up the panel whereas this it's like sandpaper is grabbing it basically it makes a big difference over here it's still a little curve in there because it's a curve in there you're going to need some shrinking to bring that around All right, so we're getting it to come around. Let's uh, tip it once more, and then then we'll shrink it again. Now, um, what I'm going to choose to do, this one is limited as to how much I can go because it's going to foul up here. So I'm going to change my bottom wheel, and that will tip it a little bit further. All right, so we, now we have the new wheel. That'll allow it to uh, define that peak a little bit better. still have to push up on it. So we check the positioning. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty straight. We'll give it another run through. We'll come down a little bit on the screw. On this one you have to come down a little bit. The other one you don't. This one's progressive. Yeah, you have to turn this in to go into the V to get more squeeze action to bring that around. So I went through two, two times now and now I'm again right in this corner where it makes that sharp turn. I got a lot of extra metal. This is coming around really nice right here but I got extra metal right there.
right, now we'll go over to the car. Now this is one thickness removed, but it'll give you an idea of what needs to happen here. This is a lot of angle, so we got to come over quite a bit. And as that comes over, we still got to shrink it some because uh, I can see the curve is going this way. So that means I have to shrink a lot more even over in here to get that to come over. So the bottom is looking pretty good. The bottom is fitting just about where it needs to go. This needs a bunch here and I need a lot more shrinking. See how it's causing that to happen. So let me put some more shrink over from here to here. Now we'll take a slapper and we're going to slap that over a little bit. Fulcrum, lever. Little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Look at that, that's starting to look right now. But it's got a, yeah, I guess that's pretty straight. It doesn't look bad. It's got that nice peak over here. I think that's exactly what we wanted. We'll knock this over just a little more. And we're still gonna have to shrink in the radius here. It's bunching up there. Now this is a situation is if you don't have a really good shrinker you're gonna to have to hammer form that so you would have to capture this and then you would shrink it on the hammer form. You could, you could save it uh, so that it uh, did the angle just like you wanted it to do. All right, so let's go shrink that some more because we got extra, extra material right in here. And I have a special die for that. I don't know if the other die that I've been using will work. Now let's bring it over to the car and see what the angle looks like. Again, this is one thickness removed, so it's not totally defining. All right, so we got that a little bit too much. That's got to come up this way. We have gauges for that, so. I kinked it there, so. but that's, there's extra material in there, so I got to get that out right there. An extra helping hand is a big help.
All right, so we have this back on here, and we'll see how this fits. This has to go down more in order for it to come on more. I can't register in because this edge has to go down more because I got all this gap in here. So <clears throat> that has to be shrunk even more. Now, do we have a gauge for right at that peak? Which one is it? Three it goes right here. Okay. Yeah, according to that, it's pretty close. And two. Oh no, that's number one. This is number three. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to go a lot more. Yeah. Number one is over here. All right, one is pretty close. And two. That's three. Two. All right, two's got to go more. And three has got to go more. All right. So two and three. Let's see if we can get this to come around. on the curve that where you have to do all the work. That's where the shrinking and the stretching and on the curves. All right, so that's coming down. So let's do it some more here. Got to come down a little more. All right. Let's see if we can slap that over now. Yeah, right there. This flexible shape pattern goes on now. I was having a hard time sliding down still, so it's holding up right in here. This this front is good. I gotta bring that over just a little more right here. Let's see what that does. That's pretty steep uh, transition from one side to the other of the peak. It's still got to go in some more. It's, it's, yeah, I know it's hitting on this outer edge, see, and it won't allow it to go down, so that's what's causing this gap here. Let's see if we can still knock that over a little more. Let's 
see what that did. All right, so that's registering better and better as I bring that edge over. See, but it's loose here still. Is that edge still has to come over a little bit, but it's getting better. It's got to go that way too a little bit. And then let's check this number five gauge. The number five gauge is off here. Let's put it on the car and let's see what it how it registers on the car over there. According to this, I need to shrink a lot more here and pull that edge around. Let's try that. Mm. Let's see if that made a difference. All right. It's still going to need more right in here. Yep. Let me see what the gauge says now. So that gauge was about a half an inch gap before. As I shrink that, it's coming down. We still got a little bit. All right, so now we put this on. It's starting to register right. Where is it hung up? Right there still. More shrinking there. So this has to come around. there a little bit over in here try it back on the car again trying it on the car is not uh, anything that you want to be definitive with because it's one thickness removed but it does give you a pretty good uh, idea how close you are so now it's it's registering pretty good now. So this has got to come more over here. And it might need less on the bottom. So I've got to bring the bottom out maybe in more here. This is looking pretty good up in here. So we're getting really close. Slap this edge over a little bit more. Come back with that a little bit, and then we got to add some here. Try it on the car once more. Yeah. All right. Closer and closer. So I think I'm going to call it there because it's getting late. I got a class tomorrow. Uh, one of the 10-day uh, contest winners, Jason from Marlboro, is going to be in tomorrow. That'll be interesting. I'm going to see if we can uh, record some of his, uh, his, act, uh, or his time here uh, working on that, uh, that little Volkswagen wire for him. But uh, you can see this piece is coming along pretty nice. We've got a little bit more tuning to do to it. And the lesson here is 
if you're doing a one-off car, um, you really have to struggle through to get everything to fit really perfect. But if you were going to make multiples of this, and that's probably our intent here, then we can, uh, if you then invest in the time to make a hammer form, and this you can't, we can't hammer form over this body. We'd have to make another situation, which we'll get into later. Uh, so if you were making multiples and you had the hammer form for this, you could take and clamp this onto the hammer form and just slap that and have it all in alignment in a matter of minutes without having to use all the gauges and everything because then what happens is the hammer form is the actual uh, gauge. It sets your arrangement. It also uh, will help you set the area value too, but mostly just the arrangement. And uh, it's a slow, tedious process, if you've seen, just to get this angle. And this is a really complex uh, peak. And you don't see a peak like this on very many fenders. You might see a hint of a peak. This is an extreme peak. Makes it very complex. Now, if... Uh, Jills can get me the flexible shape pattern for here. I'll show you what we're going to intend to do is after we get this tweaked a little bit more, we're going to make this panel next, which will be sometime late next week or whatever. We'll start on this panel. And this is probably a two or three day panel. It's a complicated one because this has a reverse curve in it. We're going to register that on there like that. And you see you have a situation where the curve is going this way, but going that way at the same time. So that's a pretty extreme reverse curve, too. It's not an easy reverse curve. But once we get this panel made and made well, then joining this panel will make a really strong assembly and uh, then what happens is we, we join these two flexible shape patterns after we get this assembly done and we fit this together with the both flexible shape patterns which have now been joined again right on the fender and then we'll do probably some more tweaking so we'll have this assembly but uh, I, my, my goal was to do two weeks to get this fender, but unless I get a bunch of help from it, it's probably going to be more like a month or so. All right, so this is the first panel that Jill's has ever made. And this is a, a relatively easy one. Right now it's not in arrangement. You can see he's been working it out of arrangement. So that one is going right here. When you put the curve this way, that'll fit right on there really nicely. So this panel will be joining up with this panel and this panel has a reverse curve too but it's not as extreme this is a more of a mild reverse curve down in here and this is your standard compound curve right in here All right, i hope you enjoyed this uh, video tonight a uh, lot of little detail work you can show uh, it shows how much finessing and how important the measuring is and where hammer forming comes in uh, when these cars were produced, any of the cars in the 30s that were produced in low numbers by a coach builder, once they knew that they were probably going to sell more than one, they spent the time and a lot of them would have a hammer form situation uh, and it made them a lot easier to make. So um, you can see the benefit of being able to fit right to a, a hammer form. So. We've got uh, this one almost done, and we're going to continue on next week. Thanks for watching. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Metal is clay.